Hi everyone and welcome to BrickCats. Today I am reviewing Jirax Thai LN Starfighter version 2, which was released this summer by BrickVault. As always, I greatly appreciate it if you subscribe or give the video a like. Your support means more great mock reviews in the future. The TIE Fighter, of course, was the backbone of the Imperial Starfighter Corps, and it's instantly recognizable from the eyeball cockpit and the prominent wings covered in solar panels. Without shields, and presumably cheap to build and relatively simple to fly, the Empire embraced the quantity as a quality strategy and tended to flood the battle zone with fighters to overwhelm their opponents. In my reviews, I offer my opinions on aesthetics and model features, parts issues you might want to look out for, the build experience, the model's integrity, and I offer a conclusion on the model along with pricing information. If you're watching this, I assume you have bought the instructions or are interested in buying them, and I assume a basic level of familiarity with BrickLink's ordering system. My disclaimer on this and all my mock reviews is that I only use genuine LEGO bricks. And lastly, I always purchase the instructions for my own personal enjoyment, and in the hopes that my advice will make your experience more enjoyable and or less expensive. As you probably expect, this model is visually stunning, and every major feature of the fighter we see in canon has been accurately represented. One of the major changes from version 1 was elimination of the expensive 6x6 top dome in favor of the new 4x4 dish. This one doesn't hinge up and down, and unfortunately this element has a stud on top, but it still looks good, and of course Jarek has built the rest of the cockpit section a little bit differently to make up for the differences in shape. The windscreen and cannon assembly has been revised, and the eyeball shape is definitely, or sorry, the eyeball shape is defined by these 3x3x2 round corner bricks that are, in my opinion, the best approximation of the roughly spherical shape we see in the film models. The cockpit windscreen hinges at the bottom, and in addition to the control yoke, which you can kind of see in there, there are some screens uh, off to the side in the trans red tiles. I've got a better picture of this to show when I was building it this time. The cockpit is more accurately represented by what we see in Star Wars Squadrons. And the droid arms that make up this assembly, they break up the smooth outline of the eyeball just a little bit, uh, but it does allow us allow Jarek to add this little bit of grieving we see here on the side. Moving to the rear, the twin ion engines are represented by these two red modified plates with bar pieces, and along with the diamond shaped vent in the center here. I elected to add these one by one round quarter tiles in black to make the cockpit a little cleaner. This is part 25269. I think that making these four studs black helps round out the cockpit in a subtle but noticeable way, but these are, of course, entirely optional. And this was Jarek's idea himself on his Instagram page. As you can see, I went with the textured wings, and instructions are provided for the smooth version of the wings. These grew, a lot, grew on me a lot after I finished the model. And it's definitely a more accurate representation of the solar panels um, using the fluted bricks. And I think that the fluted bricks are actually a lot less distracting than the smooth wings in my version 1 TIE Fighter, and that's due to the uh, reduction in reflection on the surface. And the reason I was initially a little skeptical was because the fluted surface has gaps um, where LEGO doesn't make uh, pieces with the fluid texture. And I thought these were going to be a little distracting, but it's really not. Uh, they don't stick out too much, and um, the majority of the surface is still covered, so it looks really good. Also, on the wings, the shape is quite different than version 1. So here's version 2, here's version 1. These wings are about two plates taller, and maybe one, one and a half studs wider. So the angles on these slanted sections here are slightly steeper than on version 1. And while I haven't taken the protractor to, to measure the angles, I actually think the version 1 wings are slightly closer to the film models, but only just so. No one's really going to notice the difference, I think, uh, on casual observation. I just think that the, the film models have a slightly more defined hexagonal shape um, with the shallower angles here, while this one is a little more rectangular, I guess. 
not a big deal. They still both look great. That's just kind of my observation from, from comparing the pictures. And lastly, the stand is quite simple, but also very effective, and it holds the fighter at a nice angle. I haven't been using it just because my filming setup is a little short here, but I guess that's not too bad. I will say that because of the TIE Fighter's chunky wings, this really doesn't look as good as the Interceptor does from the side, in my opinion. So you can see, like, you, you lose sight of the, the cockpit pretty quickly, uh, depending on which angle you've got it facing you. So I think you want it kind of like that, but anyway, without getting into a super complicated and um, probably less stable arrangement where you've got this kind of cantip at an angle like this as well, uh, the stand does perfectly fine. It's the same one for the Interceptor. This version of the model with the fluted 1x2 bricks and the wings uses 116 elements and 1,356 pieces. If you have version 1, the instructions come with a supplemental parts list for everything you need to convert the old version into the new, and that parts list contains 103 elements and 1,136 pieces, so there's not much in common between the original and this version if you choose to go with the texture wings. And I will say that 312 of those 1,136 pieces are going to be the 1x2 fluted bricks. The four brick modified 1x1 with stud on one side, part 87087, specified in light bluish gray, are completely hidden and can be any color. And these are found right here, behind the 3x3x2 corner bricks. The 4 brick modified 1x2 with studs on one side, part 11211 in black, are almost completely hidden. Neutrals are very safe here, but any color is likely going to be just fine, as you can only barely see them along the bottom of the cockpit, and that's only if you look real hard inside there. You can't even see them right now. These 8 3x3x2 dome top round corner bricks, part 88293 in light bluish gray, are usually very expensive in the US right now from BrickLink, and to get all 8 of them from one store typically runs you about $1 per piece. I suggest buying these from LEGO Bricks and Pieces, and in December 2021 it's available for $0.52 cents each. Note that if you're planning to build the TIE Interceptor and the Vader's TIE Advanced, you need 8 of them for each, so if you buy all 24, that brings down your average cost if you place one big order. The cockpit windscreen specified is the DISH 6x6 inverted, no studs with bar handle with Star Wars 8 spoke dark bluish gray frame and rivets TIE cockpit pattern, part 18675 PB09. This part seems to have a wide variation in price. One time I ran the algorithm, it was giving me like $35 or something insane. So definitely make sure that you're paying a reasonable amount, first of all. But part 18675 PV02, the dish 6x6 inverted, no studs with bar handle and Star Wars 8 spoke radial cockpit pattern, is essentially the same thing with a slightly different color, and it seems to be consistently less expensive. And if you have the newest TIE Fighter, set 75300, you already have this piece. Staying inside the cockpit, again, very hard to see, but the two-tile 1x2 with avionics, Star Wars copper, red, and silver pattern, part 3069 BPS2, can also be randomly expensive, so I would be sure to check and see how much you're paying for it. Sometimes the algorithm gives you a store selling them for 50 cents, which is pretty reasonable, but sometimes you get a store selling them for like $5. Personally, I think I would just skip them as they're hidden inside the cockpit and you can barely see them even if you look really hard. The tile round 2x2 with bottom stud holder and black Star Wars TIE Fighter pattern, part 14769PB025, can be expensive. It's nice to have, but even a solid color 2x2 round tile in dark bluish gray would look good here, or maybe even two ingot pieces to save on cost. The three Technic Axle 3L, part 4519, are specified in black. This color is uncommon, and light bluish gray works just fine. You can see one uh, stud's length here uh, in the bottom of the sand, and you can see an end of one here, and there's another one inside here, I believe, covered up by this tile. The 5L axle you could also substitute for light bluish gray. I had a black one handy, and you can barely see the end of it right here. And this 5L axle you could probably just omit because it seems to be more for 
structural strength, but this thing is already very, very strong. So it might not even be necessary. Finally, 12 of the 28 Technic Pin 1 half, part 4274, specified in light bluish gray, are used in the stand. You can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and these are all hidden by these tiles, so blue is a really common color, which you probably already have. The other 16 are quite visible um, in the wing assemblies here, so those need to be light bluish gray. This is a reasonably straightforward build, and sorting some parts out before starting will likely save you some time and frustration, as most of the parts are obviously in light bluish gray. The instructions contain 187 steps, which includes the sand, and each part to be added is highlighted with a yellow outline. I ran into a couple of minor issues with the build. When starting the wings, adding the snot brick assemblies at the top and the bottom of the support pylons, and then securing them to the outboard side between the steps 64 and 69 and 74 caused a lot of strain. So basically what you do is you're building the central pylon, and you have two assemblies uh, with snot both here and here, and then you connect them with plates um, on both sides. And before you add the 2x6 plates on the outboard side, that's this side here, uh, you can kind of see the assembly is curving inward like this. Um, and that kind of implies that there's some, some tolerance issues there. And I think it just might be that um, the, the tolerance on LEGO bricks um, just might be barely exceeded with the number of connections just because there are a lot of plates stacked in between those. Um, so be warned, it can take a little bit of force to, to snap those together, but once you get them, they seem to be pretty stable. I do imagine they're under a little bit of strain inside there, but it doesn't really matter. You probably assume this is the case, but I can definitely confirm. Um, the wings are a little tedious as you're placing 312 with these fluted 1x2 bricks. I think this is the record for the largest quantity of a single element I've ever bought at one time, and <laughs> it's not too bad, especially if you do the sections in parallel. Uh, the number of times you need to do each wing subassembly is clearly noted at the beginning of the section, um, but yeah, it, it does take a little bit of time. Like on the first version of the TIE Fighter, I did have a lot of trouble getting the outer borders of the wings to clip together nicely. Um, I, I have them together right now, but I can tell I mean, they're definitely under a lot of pressure. As are these diagonal wing supports here. So these took a lot of wrestling to get out as well. Um, see, for some reason, especially on the inside, the inside seemed to be a lot different, or a lot more difficult than the, than the outside. So really what I usually had to do was I had to put this 1x4 modified plate on first, um, and then put this one on to kind of join the two here. So it took actually a lot of pressure to make that connection, but once it's in place, it seems stable. Uh, again, probably under a lot of strain, but whatever. And lastly, when adding these bar and Technic uh, pin details in steps 148, 150, 154, and 158, the instructions having you clipping in this bar first and then putting the pins on, um, and I found that to be basically impossible. So I definitely recommend putting the Technic pins on the bar and then clipping it in um, instead of the other way around. I didn't have any trouble with any viewing angles or anything like that, so in general the instructions are very good, and the entire build took me about four hours. The biggest issue with version 1 in terms of stability was the windscreen and cockpit laser assembly which used droid arms and uh, bar with claw pieces to secure it. And it was not very stable and it was very difficult to put back together when it fell apart. Happily that's all been fixed with just a simple modified tile and clip. And while the cannons do move a bit, they're obviously very easy to put back in place. And the cannons are really the only movable part on this entire model, which is very solid overall. You can pick it up by both wings without any issues. I wouldn't recommend picking it up by one wing just because the, the sheer force, if you will, can cause things to come loose. Um, this model is quite heavy for, for what it is.
but there's not really anything that you would be able to bump out of place or knock loose. The wings are constructed directly off the central frame. Um, there's no clip and bar connection like the official models, so there's no real wiggly wiggliness or, or play there. And swooshing the model is relatively easy, as you'd expect. You just grip it like you normally would, and you can whip this thing around to any reasonable degree, and it's not going to come apart. Or you can barely hear any creaking of the pieces uh, at all, which is unusual on LEGO. So yeah, very solid model. And when the fighter is sitting on the stand, I'll just note this because I was a little surprised. Obviously the uh, TIE Fighter is, is a different ship than the TIE Interceptor. And I felt like the TIE Interceptor just felt a little more stable on the stand for some reason. I'm not sure if it's like a, a center of gravity issue, but the, the, tie, the standard TIE Fighter just feels a little, a little less stable. It's not a big deal. I mean, this is just going to sit on your desk or whatever. Uh, the instructions also take, tell you to take it off by tilting it forward, so that's definitely the best way to do it. If you tilt it backwards, sometimes the modified uh, tile on the bottom comes off, like so. But not a big deal to get back on. But the stand is definitely a welcome inclusion, and highly recommend building it. Jerak's second iteration of the TIE Fighter is a really excellent model, and it's a big improvement on the original. BrickLink's algorithm was returning 4 stores and $145 before shipping in tax with no part substitutions, which is about $165 after shipping in tax. If you take out the expensive 3x3x2 corner bricks and buy them from LEGO, you can likely shave another 7 or $8 off the total, and possibly reduce the store count by 1. And you can buy a lot of the other expensive pieces, like the tiles um, and such, off of uh, bricks and pieces as well, which should further reduce your cost. Buying the supplemental parts to convert the original into the new version was typically about $107 from four stores, or about $127 after shipping and tax. Instructions for Jarex TIE Fighter version 2 are available from Brick Vault and cost $16.99 in the United States. If you're deciding between version 1 and 2, there's almost no reason to build version 1 at this point. The, that top dome is still super expensive. Um, if you already have version 1 and you handle it a lot, uh, I think version 2 is a lot more user-friendly just because of that windscreen assembly. Uh, it's so tedious to put back in place. But if you're satisfied with the version 1 you have, and you just leave it on your desk or whatever, version 2 is probably an unnecessary expense. Thanks as always for taking the time to watch my review of version 2 of Jerax TIE Fighter. I'm curious to know how many of you have built both, which do you prefer? If you have something to share that I left out, or have a question about something I didn't cover in my review, please let me know in the comments. Thanks again for liking the video, subscribing to the channel, or following me on Instagram. I hope to see you back next time in the new year, and I hope you all have a wonderful holiday season.